Today, let's spend a little bit of time talking about love languages. Gary Chapman wrote a very popular book called The Five Love Languages. I think this book was so popular because it really highlighted this aspect of love being something that is so easily or not so easily perceived. Our perceptions are so important. Getting back to these tenets of cognitive behavioral therapy, how you think about the world, how you perceive yourself and others contributes so much to your experience. But today, I also want to talk about a different type of love language, and that is the language that is seeded during your childhood. And it doesn't necessarily fit neatly into this list of five love languages. Basically, whatever your parents or caregivers did was perceived as love, good or bad. For example, if a father comes into a room where a toddler is sitting and the child looks up, sees the father, and holds out their arms expecting a hug, the father comes over to give that hug, and then the phone rings. And the father stops, takes the phone call, and walks out of the room. And meanwhile, the toddler is sitting there disappointed. That child would then learn that love is rejection. Love is abandonment. Love is not being prioritized. Love is disappointing. Now, I'm using a very simple scenario and kind of running with it in an exaggerated way, but the point remains the same, and that is the way you were treated is the way that you perceive love. For example, love is when you are financially taken care of, when your mother or father pays all your bills. You might then be inclined to be financially responsible for others as a way of continuing this love language. In another scenario, you might have experienced a lot of emotional or physical abuse in some twisted way that would have been seeded in you as this is how love is expressed. Whatever your parents did, the child brain interprets it as, this must be love. The question then becomes, okay, what is my love language that I've carried over from childhood? You can answer that question by looking at your current romantic relationship or your most recent romantic relationship and look at the dynamic that played out. How did you experience love from that person? Were they attentive? Were they avoidant? Were they honest? Were they shady? Were they affectionate? Were they abusive? I'm not saying that you're seeking love in negative ways or desiring it in the negative way, but you might end up being more tolerant of it, especially if you find yourself in patterns of these negative dynamics where you repeatedly experience betrayal at the hands of another, or abuse, where you constantly feel taken for granted, where you constantly feel that your people-pleasing is not reciprocated. If these are repeated patterns in both romantic relationships and friendships, chances are this might be a remnant of your childhood love language that is playing out, the ways that you've learned to give and receive love. I'll continue to talk about childhood love languages as I answer today's questions, so let's get to those questions now. Good morning, good evening, I don't know what time zone it is that side, but my question is, um, you know as a human being, right, we all have different um, love languages, right, and love communications, right, so with me, my biggest love language has to be communication texting you know just constantly texting and immediate replies and obviously someone can't constantly text all the time people get busy and all that but when you see that it's a it's a it's an ongoing thing like busy or not like this person is just not a texter so i've had the conversation as well with my partner let to let them know that i feel like because I'm more of a texter and I feel like you can just try and improve a little bit, you know, because I know she wants to mention that she's not a texter. She's not one to be on her phone constantly and texting. So I'm a big fan of not necessarily immediate replies, but replies, you know. I don't believe in a partner sending you a message and you're only replying to that message two, three hours later or four hours later, you know. So how does one deal with that? Like when you've already let your partner know that this is your biggest love language texting and replies but the person is still taking long to reply so i as well deal with that because i tried to make an an exception that this is who she is she's just not a texter but it's what makes me complete you know in a relationship and if it's lacking 
then it's it's very tough because I don't want to have to speak about the same thing over and over again, you know. So how does one deal with that?